All right, so football still the topic on the Sports Max Zone and the finalists for the Ray and Nephew Jamaica Premier League have been decided. And for the second consecutive season, Mount Pleasant and Cavalier will battle for the crown. Mount Pleasant defeated Waterhouse 2-1 on Sunday night, 3-2 on aggregate to book their place with the man of the match, Devontae Campbell, scoring both goals for the defending champions. Their head coach, Theodore Tapper Whitmore, was pleased to once again be in the showpiece game. Well, yes, um, we are in the final, so we, we just wait and see our opponent. But again, we, we go back to the Waterhouse. Um, if you're looking in the player, we, we yet to see a Waterhouse come from a goal down or two goal down. So once we could get that go ahead goal this afternoon, we know it would be difficult for the Waterhouse team. All right, and in the second semi-final, Cavalier got the better of Arnett Gardens 3-1 in testy conditions, following some fan unrest. Nevertheless, Dwayne Atkinson, man of the match, Adrian Reed Jr. and Jalmaro Calvin got on the score sheet for Cavalier and left their coach Rudolf Speed eager to yet again face Mount Pleasant in the final. Well, you know, congratulations to them. Um, both of us are two decent teams. Of course, it's always a pleasure playing against them, um, so next week will be the same. All right, well, with us to break down these two semifinals is our in-house football analyst, Lege Williams. Good afternoon, Lege. I have to apologize, of course, for last week, Friday, because I did tell the viewers that if you didn't get the predictions right, that I would roast you on today's show. But as a matter of fact, I'm saying congratulations. You got it spot on. You are our prediction guru. For this week. <laughs> <laughs> you had to add that little caveat. But for this week, because well, we have what's to... What's that, the first time this year? He has to keep, wow. We have to keep him on his toes, <laughs> Ricardo, and I'm so happy that you're back because you'll help me do the it's roasting. It's not the first time this year that I... you're getting it right? That, that's impossible. At 100%? No, nah, but you can't just put what? everything at 100%. <laughs> you need, you need a, little, a little variation. Not when you're a guru. There's no variation in being a guru. Yeah, well, you have I, to get I, it. I, I, watch, I'll just continue to get things right in the JPL. So you don't have to question it. Maria don't question I know Sir Lance believe in me. But you guys, I'll just have to continue getting it I right. just know Sir Lance is on vacation. So yeah, you your better belief get it right. system is not here. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get to the game. Of course, it will be a repeat of last year's final. Mount Pleasant versus Cavalier. And I think, you know, it's going to be a mouth-watering matchup. Let's start, Liz, by talking about how Mount Pleasant went about their business against Waterhouse because there was a point in the game they were playing with 10 men. Yeah, I think it was the game plan by Mount Pleasant was spot on. Their coaching staff really developed a game plan and, a, and just had the ga all the game states planned out to a T, um, especially when it comes on to build up. So, Waterhouse. What they did in the first leg of the quarterfinal and in the second leg of the quarterfinal was be a little bit more passive in the first leg and then in the second leg come out a bit more aggressive. It was a similar tale in the semi-final and in the semi-final they started with more attacking players starting Andre Fletcher, Denardo Thomas as well as Javain Bryan coming in as well with Rivaldo Mitchell. So it was a, it was a, a very attacking lineup and they have a very interesting press waters in the fact that they don't try and high press you that much but they'll just stay with a high line and stay high and try and force you to play through them. So that's what they were trying to do, but Mount Pleasant were so secure in their build-up in all phases, switching between a 3-2 base, a 4-2 base, and really their centre-backs and defensive midfielders were extremely key. We saw Topi there getting an assist directly for Devontae Campbell's first goal, and I think Demario Phillips at the base of midfield and sometimes in attacking midfield as well, he was superb also. So Mount Pleasant got their game plan spot on, and they really played an excellent game, and they were deserving winners even though Shaquille Dyer did something really stupid and got himself sent out. Yeah, really disappointing from him because I didn't expect that, especially in a game so important like this. Mount Pleasant Waterhouse, second leg. You you just touched on Devontae Campbell, but I feel like he deserves a proper response, the assessment of how he started the, the JPL season for his team and, of course, how he comes up trumps when it's key moments like this. Yeah, you're very right because he started getting his full run into the team. He's a young player, started getting his full run in the team last season around in the playoffs and he made a huge impact in the semi-finals and in the final as well. And I think for all of this season, while he has been with Mount Pleasant, he has been fantastic. I've been saying this since very, very, very early on in the season. 
I, I was saying it because Mount Pleasant have two very good wingers in Kimoni Bailey and Devante Campbell on either side and Kimoni Bailey was getting the goals. So I think Devante Campbell, his stock wasn't as high as it should have been. But for my money, I think Devante Campbell has been the best winger in the Jamaica Premier League this season. He might not have the, all the goals to show for it, but he has been assisting quite a number of goals. And I think in this game, he's just an unstoppable dribbler. And when you have, once you have a superpower like that, it's going to be tough for any team to stop you, much less um, this Waterhouse unit. And he definitely proved decisive today. And yesterday, I, I beg your pardon. And, he was definitely deserving of man of the match. Yeah, since we're talking about the football, let's stay with it and talk about the Arnett Gardens um, Cavalier game. Um, Cavalier getting the job done like they've been able to so often in the last three or four years. Talk us through that second leg um, performance from Rudolph Speed's side. Yeah, you know, Ricardo, uh, last season when we were breaking down the season, I, I, as so often as you said a while ago, just said that Cavalier were getting the job done, I think. That wasn't the case in this instance because they were superior in both legs for me. I think they tapered off towards the end of the first leg, but I think that was a bit of tiredness creeping in. But in this second leg, they were superior even with everything else going on. Every time there was a break in play, it came back. They looked the superior team. They were more on it offensively. Their press was really good. They were always creating chances. They could have scored more. And yes, Arnett Gardens, they had the crowd behind them. And yes, they, they, they also created some chances for themselves. But there was never any doubt, in my opinion, if you're watching the game, who the better team was. Their attack was really firing. Dwayne Atkinson getting on the score sheet, of course. Calvin also getting on the score sheet. But I think the change that they made in midfield, bringing in Adrian Reed Jr., I think he was so good because in the previous game, they were switching between a three at the back, four at the back system, depending on the, the game state. But in this game, they switched to a proper double pivot, 4-3-3 system with Cadet and Adrian Reed Jr. at the base of it. And Cadet in the last game, Cadet is more of a ball winner, so he will always want to jump out at the attacking midfield of the opposing team. But with Adrian Reed Jr., he's a player that reads it more and he's also a better ball player in the middle of the park. So I think even though he scored a stunner of a goal, I think his performance was so good, it would have been worthy of man of the match regardless. And I think he was the key difference in Cavalier's performance level not dropping off in that second half. And let's talk about that goal because it was a spectacular goal. But not only that, it came at a pivotal point of the game because Arnett Gardens down 1-0 in the second leg. At that stage, heading towards halftime, they're thinking, let's get to halftime and regroup. And that goal essentially, I think, in many ways, took that opportunity away, although they got a goal themselves shortly after. But it was a terrific strike, wasn't it? Yeah, it was fantastic. And this is not something that we're necessarily shocked that he can do because you have seen it, I have seen it as well at schoolboy yeah. football level. He has been producing like this and he has played a lot of his Jamaica Premier League career at centre-back centre and now that he's maturing more and being able to take on responsibility in midfield, he's putting on excellent performances like this and it's no less than he deserves because, as I said, it was a lovely performance and a really, really well taken goal. Yeah, I know on the show we're going to spend time, of course, previewing that final. But Liz, just from now, so that you don't get the opportunity to change your mind and change your predictions and all that, um, what type of final are we expecting? Let's just oh. talk about that first. You, predict, you have to predict today so you can start thinking about it. But what? <laughs> look at his oh, face. Hold on, hold on. You see, I, you know what people don't understand about the prediction guru, oh, guys? <laughs> you see, people think that I just, I just come here and I, get, I, I see a crystal ball, like, is that so raven? And I, I automatically just get an idea. You used idea. to watch that so raven? I used yeah, to. Yeah. Or you watch replays? No, no, I watch it live. I had cable, Ricardo. Okay. I had cable. Right. I, I just thought you weren't old enough. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that young, unfortunately. Come on, stick to the question. <laughs> yeah, so I, I was saying that is, I have to, what I do as an analyst, I watch over the games, which I haven't gotten a chance to do as yet. I watch the games live. I have to watch over the games, I have to make my notes, I have to then predict what each coach is going to do. Mm -hmm. And then based off that, that's where I make my assumptions from. So I'm, I'm not a guesser. Okay, oh, okay. good save. That, I mean, that's a plausible save. If I didn't know you, I would definitely believe you. But what type of <laughs> final are we looking forward to, Leash? Uh, oh, this final, is going to, this final is going to be a really good one. I think it's going to be an improvement game-wise from last season because, as I said, 
I've been saying all season that Mount Pleasant is the best team in the league. Yeah. And I've, been, I've, well, I've just said now that Cavalier, I think, have improved from last season as well because of their young players getting better. They've changed their system as well and they have more ways to play. Yeah. It's not only just we're going to sit deep and counter. They can press higher now. They can sustain pressure as well. And Mount Pleasant, you know the, the, the depth of talent that they have. So they have a multitude of ways of playing as well. I mentioned earlier how they build up play in several different shapes. So I think it's going to be a really high quality final, just like the two games in the regular season were. And I'm expecting a pretty exciting one. And hopefully it doesn't disappoint. Yeah. What about the yeah. styles of the coach? Oh, the styles of the coaching are... Well, you, you see, the thing is, what I love about Mount Pleasant is, you know, their coach, Davian Ferguson, uh, he's an Arsenal fan. Their assistant coach, Davian Ferguson, he's an Arsenal fan. Yeah. And you can see a lot of the similarities between his positional play style and Mount Pleasant's positional play style. And you can make, you know, your judgments of that. So it's very easy for me to break them down because there's probably no team in the world I know better than Arsenal. And oh, for Cavalier, it's, it's pretty easy as well because Rudolf Speed is a man of his principles. He's not going to swap game in, game out to suit yeah. the opposition. So I think it's a good tactical matchup. It's two variations of each other, but they still have their similarities as well. Yeah. Similarities well, as well. The final will be on May 19th, so we'll have some time to talk about that in more detail. Um, but I want to get through a couple of what I consider to be important issues here. And I want to start by asking you what you felt about the refereeing in the Arnett Gardens versus Cavalier game. Um, specifically, I also want to know what you thought about the penalty call that led to the Arnett Gardens goal. That led to the Arnett Gardens goal, which yeah. would make it 2-1? Yes. Well, okay, that... All right, how can I say this now? I don't want to... The right way. Okay, so... <laughs> Initially, you know, watching live, I wasn't close by to the pitch, so I, 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 at first I thought that the penalties were soft. Both Cavaliers' first goal and Arnett Garden's um, first goal, so or their goal in the game. So I thought they were soft, yes, but watching it over, yeah. you get to see that there is a little bit of contact there for... Uh, this example, you see... And Calvin, you're using a little bit deliberately in this instance? Yes, because there doesn't need to be a lot of contact, okay. in my opinion. I think my, my perception of a foul is that a foul is a foul no matter where it takes place. Yeah. But with that being said, though, Ricardo, I, I have to say it. I'm not sure how many referee friends I have, but I might not have much more after this. But I think after the initial incident with the bottle throwing and yeah. maybe a, a, some pressure getting onto the referees after Cavalier's penalty early in the game, mm -hmm. I saw a lot of... 50-50 cars going the way of Arnett Gardens. Mm. So, in that sense, I wasn't surprised that the Arnett Gardens penalty was given. Yeah, uh, but you think that even without the pressure that might have been put on the referees um, from the butter-throwing incidents, that you would have called that a penalty? I wouldn't be opposed to calling it a penalty, is how I'll put it. Okay, fair enough. Here's the thing, though. The, the <laughs> I'm not even sure I should be having this specific part of the conversation with you, you know, but I want to get your take on... I don't know what you saw from a security standpoint. I know there have been some questions raised. So let's look at the positives, right? The Real Nephew Premier League playoffs have been wonderful from a spectator standpoint. To see fans come out and support the league in the way they have has been terrific and can only be good for the Real Nephew Jamaica Premier League, um, can only be good for the PFGL, can only be good for the sponsors, can only be good for Sportsmax, the television product, and can only be good for the players because they get to perform with a tremendous atmosphere, which as a performer, as an entertainer, you want that. But having said that, I can't say, Elijah, that I was not concerned that bottles and glass bottles were being thrown. And there is a suggestion that maybe in an arena like that, those things should not be allowed in the venue. Um, I, I don't know your take on it. And I, and I know it's something that the PFGL will likely have to look at because what happened with, what, three separate bottle throwing incidents? Um, that put a pause to the game as well is not a good look for 
the product. That's not what you want. You want the fan support, but you don't want that level of indiscipline. And also, you don't want to be providing tools that could lead to the, the detriment of any of the league itself, of any player, of any spectator, just about anybody who is part of this spectacle. I don't even know if I've left anything for you to say after I've said all of that, but I'd, I'd still love to get your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, it was disappointing to see, you know, I, I was in the crowd as well, so it was disappointing to see. You weren't right, throwing the... anything though? No, of course not. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good citizen. <laughs> So it was disappointing to see. Uh, it's not the first time I've been at a game and there's an incident like that or even at a, a big gathering because we see it at Champs all the time as well. But it, it was disappointing to see. It's not something that we want to see. But in terms of the, the, what you're saying, like glass bottles, for example, we have to remember that Real Nevio is a brand Main sponsor, sponsor yeah. for the Jamaica Premier League. There so. are ways around that, though, but that, that's another issue. So if, if, if you want to talk to... Ricardo Chambers about some of the ways that you can do it differently, um, then I'm open to having that conversation. Lijay will probably join as well, and Mariah is open as well to joining that conversation. Yeah, as long as it doesn't mean that Rhea Nevio is not the not going to be the sponsor moving forward. Because That's I, not gonna happen. I love Rhea Nevio as a happen. sponsor That's personally. That's not gonna happen. I love Rhea Nevio too. Yeah, yeah, we all do. Um, and it is it is a, a wonderful spectacle with them as part of it. I'm mean, told to go to a break, but I have to get this in because there was another major issue that caught my attention at the start of the game. This issue with the ball, your second leg semi-final being delayed because there is contention over which ball is to be used. What happened? Yeah, it, it seems as if it seems as if because usually the PFJ is responsible for um, the balls that are going to be used in the game, mm -hmm. but the what does the rule say? The general rule is that the home team is... No, what does the written rule say? What, 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 what is the rule um, from the PFJL that the players and the teams can look in the manual on paper and see rule 15.5 says this? What does it say? Well, according to, to what I know, yes. I don't think that there is a written rule. Okay. It's more of a gentleman's agreement between all the clubs. Okay. Because you also have to bear in mind that not every club has is going to have balls to be used all the time for every game. Mm. So there's that as well. But Cavalier is one of those clubs, and they were adamant that they wanted to use their ball. So the delay was caused by all of the balls being switched out to Cavalier team's ball. Okay. Mm. So so the, the general, the gentleman's agreement is that the home team provides the ball. Yeah. Who provided the ball in the first leg? Arnett Gardens, I believe. Mm. It, it's, it's interesting for me, right, because again, these little things can impact how the league is viewed. And don't get me wrong, it was a fabulous spectacle, loved it, but I didn't like that your game was being delayed because there is contention over which ball is to be used. Now, you made the point, Leger, that there is no rule. I will say there needs to be a rule that governs that aspect, both in the regular season and then specifically for the playoffs. So if in the regular season, it is the, um, the, the home team that provides the ball, fine, no problem, put that into, in, in writing. If you get to the playoffs and it is the PFGL that is supposed to provide the ball, then put that into writing. If you want to maintain that it should be the home team, then put that into writing. But there seemed to be clearly some contention yesterday and, and both coaches having slightly different views and maybe even understanding of what was supposed to happen. Um, and from what I heard from Xavier Gilbert, he was essentially saying, OK, well, at least we should know ahead of time that this is the ball that's going to be used because we fully expected that the ball we used in the first leg would be the ball that we're using in the second leg. So. Um, I, I don't want to see a repeat of that scenario for sure. But I'm done putting you on the spot, Lishe. I know, producer so, says we got to go to break. Much yeah. appreciated. Before we go to break, though, I just want to say it quickly, right? <laughs> Sorry, I was away for weeks. What's, what's your problem? The producer. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Don't worry, I'll deal with him. But quickly, I just want to say early congratulations to Lishe Williams, who has a massive lead in our Sportsmax Fantasy Premier League 
competition. Um, guess what though? I hope he doesn't bottle it. He's Arsenal supporter. <laughs> I expect that. It's a break time now. Lish doesn't get the final word, I do. <laughs>